Hello everyone, this is James Shore with a recap of episodes 1 through 10 of my Let's Play TDD series. Uh, just to quickly get you up to speed on what's going on, uh, this series, this particular video uh, shows all of episodes 1 through 10 at a speed of 10 to 1. So, um, oh man, I just wish I could type this fast. So let me tell you what's going on here. Uh, what I am doing is I am creating from scratch a program using test-driven development and the purpose here is to just you know show what test-driven development is like and uh, in at least in the way I do it which uh, I like so <laughs> so and hopefully you know you'll like it too anyway the reason I did this is because as I taught people TDD in courses and then through the immersions I do um, I discovered a lot of people had heard about test-driven development the red green and factor cycle but a lot of people hadn't really gotten a sense for what it was like to go in the very short cycles that you see with test-driven development. The quickly going from writing just a few lines of test code, seeing a failure, writing a few lines of production code, seeing it pass, refactoring uh, in very small steps. So I wanted to show that. So the project I'm working on here is a real program that is for my personal finances. It is a projection tool for retirement planning uh, that is going to replace a real spreadsheet that I use to do my uh, financial projections. So it, it helps me determine how much money I have in my budget for this year and how much I need to save for the future so that I can go into retirement um, and have enough money to live on without having a regular income. So that's what the program is. What you see me doing right now, we're already up to episode two, and if you want more details on anything you're seeing, um, I have put in, uh, at the beginning of the transition of each episode, I put a little uh, uh, thing on the screen showing you which episode we're in. So at any point you want to see more details, see at a normal speed rather than 10 times speed, uh, just go to, for example, episode three and uh, take a look. So what I'm doing is... Uh, started out with a savings account class um, and I really struggled with this. I don't know if it's clear from the video but in these first several episodes, really uh, many of the first episodes, I was struggling trying to figure out exactly how this thing was going to work. And uh, let's just watch for a second and see, uh, see what's going on here. Yeah, so I started out with just a really bare bones, uh, wanted to deposit money, withdraw money, and uh, get an ending balance, and also look at what the next year was going to be. So fairly early on, I, I started out with a, the idea of a savings account, and then fairly early on, I uh, changed it over to a savings account year. So the concept was that this class, objects of this class, would represent one year in the savings account. And actually, the savings account uh, concept was a misnomer, and later on I change it to a stock market year, because really what I'm trying to represent here is a year in the stock market. Um, and later on, we get into doing capital gains tax and other stuff that is more appropriate for uh, stock market uh, savings, or investments, I should say. I'm not going to try to explain the details of what I'm going doing in each of these episodes. Um, it's just going by too quickly. Again, if you want to see the details of a particular episode, just check it out. We're about to start episode four here. We're, uh, what you're seeing is now from episode four. Uh, so you can go see the details there. Um, really what this is, it, this recap, the purpose of this recap is to allow you to start with episode 11 having some clue about what's going on. So you'll notice that we're working solely in savings account year in these episodes. That's where I started because um, I honestly, I didn't know where to start. I wasn't sure what to do. And uh, that's often the case when I start a new project. I'm very uh, sort of lost until I've done several hours of coding or even a day or two of coding to establish some conventions and some patterns. And at this point, um, we're less than an hour into coding, even though it's the middle of the fourth episode. That's about how much coding has actually been done. So there's still a lot of fumbling around happening at this point in the in the videos. A uh, lot of uncertainty about what, how the design's going to work, where it's going to go, uh, and it's all focused on the domain layer, the savings account here. Uh, later on, actually in episode 20, 
um, is when we start doing UI stuff. So if you're really interested in the UI and not so interested in the domain layer stuff, go ahead and skip on up to episode 20 and um, it'll be more up your alley. Actually, episode 19 is kind of a fun one. Um, that shows the transition from when we went, from when I was working on the domain layer to starting to work on the UI. One thing that happened as I was working on this is that I had so much trouble. I mean, it was it's kind of painful watching this again now. I had so much trouble understanding some of the concepts. And I, I can't tell right now, if we're at the point in the video where that was true, but I would just, I would do something and it would fail, and I would do something and it was failures. I was actually sick for the first, oh, mildly sick, not enough to really prevent me from doing anything, but enough to make me kind of stupid. <laughs> So if you saw these videos or watching this recap now and, and were wondering, why is Jim so stupid? Well, part of it was that I was doing this, you know, starting a new project, which always is hard. You know, you, for me at least, starting a new project, it's always hard to wrap your head around the problem, decide where to go. And actually, I had a lot of comments on these videos saying, um, hey, Jim, why, don't, why aren't you doing some design work? Well, um, one, that doesn't video very well. But two, that's not really how I approach it. If I want to... If I want to figure out a design, I'm going to do some real code to enlighten me about how the problem works. And watching that, it looks like a lot of fumbling around the dark, but watching somebody design, they're doing the same fumbling, only they're doing it in their head and they don't have the advantage of seeing how it reflects with real code. So I did my design work by doing coding, by doing test-driven development, um, and that works pretty well in the domain layer. Uh, once I get into UI and persistence layer stuff, I'll often do my exploration experimentation without doing tests because uh, the cost of doing tests in that environment is higher. So here you see that I've, uh, I think by now I've, I'm firmly into the concept of a year, savings account year, I'm working on capital gains. Um, and trying to get to the point, I think, of doing taxes, capital gains tax, uh, in this, for this domain model, is a little funky because it's not just a flat tax. If you have $1,000 and a 25% capital gains rate, um, you don't pay $250. You pay 25% of whatever you withdrew that wasn't principal. And I'll tell you, I don't know because I was a little sick or because I was just trying to wrap my head around the problem, but man, I went, I had so much trouble figuring this out. And then on top of all of this, if you withdraw the money that you use to pay the capital gains tax, which is the model I used, um, you have to pay tax on the amount you withdrew to, cover, to pay the tax. So you, if you're withdrawing, if you're paying $250 in tax, um, you're not actually paying $250, you're paying $333. And here's the equation right here. It's coming up right now. Uh, you can see this. Um, if you have 10% of capital gains tax, you don't pay $100, you pay $111 because you also have to pay 10% on that $100 that you withdraw, and then you pay 10% on the $10 you withdrew to cover the 100, and then 10% on that, so the total is 100, 111. So that's what you're seeing me going through right now, is just trying to work with all this capital gains tax, and oh man, it was so painful doing this. Um, appreciate everybody who sat through it. I also struggled a lot, you can see it now, I struggled a lot with uh, floats versus ints. I really wanted to use fixed point math, but um, at this point in the game I was having trouble figuring that out, so I converted to doubles and then back to ints. Uh, that actually ended up remaining a problem, and you'll see in the next series of episodes, episodes 11 through 20, that I never really did stick with fixed point. Uh, and that turns out to probably be okay, because uh, this is for long-term projections, and if there's an error of even $5 over 50 years, that's okay. And I don't think even floating point rounding errors can lead to that much error. So we're in episode 8 now. The first several episodes. I probably spent the first two or three episodes just kind of wrapping my head around the problem. Next several episodes, fumbling with what I was going to do 
and then quite a bit of time just trying to make it clean, make it pretty. I don't really understand why it took so long. It may have just been because the episodes are only 14 or so minutes long, 14 to 15 minutes long. So it feels really long when you look and say, well, it took 18 episodes to finish this work. Um, but 18 episodes is, what, uh, four and a half hours, assuming a quarter of an hour in each one. And it was actually a little less. So four and a half hours to get started on a brand new project is um, is not too surprising, actually. It's a little long, but I'll chalk that up to being sick and also trying to do the videos and uh, having all that in my head as well as what I was actually trying to program. Looks like I'm just doing a lot of cleanup here, trying to get the code to read cleanly. As I said, as I was doing these tests, I just, I really had trouble wrapping my head around it, remembering how the capital gains tax was going to work, whether or not I was paying tax on which part of the withdrawal and how much capital gains tax I was paying. Um, I'm actually really happy that that coding is done now. And uh, at today, as I'm recording this, I've just finished recording episode 24 and am working on the UI now. That scratch pad you see in the, on the right-hand tab, that's something I do. Uh, normally, I keep it on an index card as I work, but for the purpose of the video, I'm making my notes on the scratch pad. It's just reminders of things that I need to do. One of the recurring themes as I was recording this was the um, sense that I was creating a primitive obsession. So I was using integers everywhere to represent both dollars and uh, tax and interest rates. So I'd say 25 was my tax rate when that meant 25%. And I really felt like that was a problem, that that was a primitive obsession and needed to be cleaned up. And I did end up cleaning it up actually in the next set of videos in episodes 10 through or 11 through 20. Um, you'll see that. So here we are, we're in the last episode of the recap. Um, you see I've actually come quite a ways. Um, at this point in the work, I'm probably about a little more than halfway through the uh, programming effort on savings account year. Uh, most of the actual coding is done, but I wasn't very happy with the way it looks. So what I did after this was clean it up, make it read better. I struggled a little bit with um, trying to figure out starting capital gains. So that is, uh, or was it ending capital gains? I don't remember. I think it was ending capital gains. Yeah, that's why I'm doing this episode. I'm trying to get ending capital gains. Uh, but it turns out that I didn't need to know what the ending capital gains were for a savings account year. I needed to know what the ending balance was. I needed to know what the ending principal was, but I didn't need to know the capital gains. And uh, I could have calculated the capital gains just by subtracting the principal from the balance. But I didn't think of that. So I, I spent most of this video struggling with that. Um, again, these, these first 10 episodes were just generally a struggle. But if you look at it, it's just flashing by quickly. You'll just see green, red, green, red, green, red. So even though it was a struggle, there was really no point at which I was more than a couple of minutes uh, lost. I was always in control of my code. And that's one of the important things with test-driven development. So that brings us to the end of our first recap. Uh, thanks for your attention. I hope you'll join us for more, and uh, I will see you later.